to the Meeple Marathon. Today I'm going to talk about five rules that you can find in the Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance book. Now that's purely because the X-Men Resistance box is the one that contains Hero Mode, which mostly lines up with every other Zombicide game to date. The actual core box of Marvel Zombies, you are playing as the zombies going around and eating everybody up. And that doesn't really line up with other previous titles of Zombicide. So these rules are coming from the Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance board game, uh, standalone expansion, and these rules can be found for free online. So if you want to, to check them out, feel free to do so. But these are rules that I think you can, uh, some of them very easily, others, you know, with a little bit of trial and tribulation, Put them into your previous Zombicide titles because I think from here on out every Zombicide title should contain these rules. And this first one might not be new to everybody depending on you know what newer iterations of Zombicide you have gotten but that's the splitting of the groups. My first introduction to Zombicide was Black Plague. I still play Black Plague and in that they had a situation where if a zombie group was uneven for example this one and they were trying to say get to this space let's say uh, storm was out of here and so it's an equal number to go around this fountain they would say okay two people go this way one person is this way and then you have to double up to make the the sides even you couldn't split uneven number groups now they're just like send one one way send one the other and then you pick where the other one goes this is so simple because previously thematic wise it didn't make any sense that zombies were just multiplying because they had to take alternate paths don't know why that was not something that was addressed earlier but it's in this box now so i wanted to make sure i mentioned it next up we have scaling to four players so this game you can play anywhere from four to six and that's so much more manageable let me you know zoom out a little here and you can see that I have room on my table to fit the game board and this is a medium size board for them but they're the four templates and even the box of minis over here if I were to have to find room for two more uh, plates then or hero trays this would just become even more of a mess it's so much more approachable for solo players and low player counts only having to deal with four players instead of six. Now how do they go about making all this happen in a game that typically needed six heroes on the board? Well let's look at, I'm just going to show you the first page of missions so this shouldn't be too spoilery or anything like that. One's the tutorial mission and one is just mission one. You can see right here that um, five to six heroes during the spawn enemy step of each enemy phase draw one additional spawn card for the first spawn point. That's one way they addressed it. Or here, five to six heroes. The green spawn point is only used in games with five to six heroes. It is active from the start of the game. And you can see it would be over here along with the start one. So if I was playing with five to six heroes, I would simply drop that down. You can go back to previous iterations of Zombicide, drop your hero count down to four and simply remove a spawn point. Or if you feel like you know that would make it too easy, you know, uh, double up a spawn point or something like that. But there are ways, this game is proving that there are ways to play with four heroes. And most of it revolves around how many zombies are on the board. And that comes from spawn points. Just simply remove spawn points or only spawn a zombie halfway through or make it like a blue one here that only activates when say this specific door opens. Just swap out a door. That way you can avoid it for a little while before that spawn point starts activating. All right, up next is um, one of the biggest ones, and I think one of the easiest ones to implement, and that is the fact that you can now add up your points, add up your hits, your successful hits, to take out the brutes, and in this case, the zombie heroes, which have replaced like the abominations and the necromancers and all those uh, bigger bad boss types from other versions of Zombicide. So let's just say, for example, that Wolverine here is trying to take out uh, Dark Phoenix, who has four health. 
she has a, a toughness of four. Now there's ways to reduce that number, but let's just say Wolverine's getting a roll of four here and he's got a roll on five plus, and maybe he's got some re-rolls here. But this would be three hits, so he wouldn't quite have done it. You know, he would have missed. In Marvel Zombies, in the hero mode, it's all or nothing. But as long as you can accumulate on the number of dice you rolled, the amount of hits based on your accuracy to take out said uh, zombie hero and or the brute. So I would have been able to take out a brute with this roll. Say this brute had been in here with these other walkers. With this three hits, I would have been able to take out a brute and take out one walker. Now there is priority. You always have to apply hits to a zombie hero first, so they would soak them up, then the brute would soak them up, then walkers and runners last, but it enables you to take out a brute. There's no longer uh, weapons that do uh, two damage at each hit. You don't have to keep track of that. You don't have to run around and search for a weapon that can take out a, a fatty or a brute before you encounter one and just have to run away from them, or you don't have to run around and find dragon bile before you can take out an abomination. Now, this game completely got rid of equipment cards. Mm, I'm not sure whether I like that or not. It replaced it with hero trait cards, which I think is perfectly fine. Um, I just think the trait cards are kind of vanilla. I wish these were um, more unique, more thematic. They're really just are ways to reroll dice, add range to your tax, things like that. And they're, they're very vanilla. There's a lot of repeats and so on and so forth. But... This is so easy to implement in previous versions of Zombicide. Simply get rid of the fact that a weapon or two does two damage or more. If you feel like that weapon becomes less effective that way, you can certainly you know, roll more dice for it. But simply just add up your hits. And if you've gotten at least two hits, you can take out a Brute or a Fatty. If you've gotten at least three hits, you can take out an Abomination. Here, Dark Phoenix is one of the heavier, harder to take down zombie heroes at four and then next up is uh, one that again you can easily implement maybe some people feel like it's more thematic otherwise but they stated in this one these guys are all superheroes they don't miss friendly fire is no longer a thing so if there is a whole horde of zombies here you know attacking our friends and Storm wants to come lend her aid and throw a bunch of dice into the attack to try and take out as many as possible she doesn't have to worry about pinging Wolverine or Colossus in the process this is a game or this is a rule that you can easily implement um, it's one that I at times especially playing with a younger audience have just gotten rid of in my Zombicide games because it's not worth trying to explain to someone oh well be careful because you're shooting range into a zone with a bunch of zombies trying to save your friend, you may hit your friend. So, getting rid of no or getting rid of friendly fire. And the last one, this is the one that is the trickiest to implement, but I feel like is a, something that future certainly future zombicide games can learn from, and that's ways to add dice to your roll at any given moment. So here's a hero dashboard for Wolverine, for one of the heroes. And they have this power indicator on the left side. Every round that they activate, they get a new power, and then they can take an action to gain two power uh, as one of their three slash four actions on their turn. But then they can use this power. A lot of times they use it to activate their special abilities that they're, they'll unlock as their rage track goes up, or they can simply spend a power before attacking to add an extra die to their roll. So Wolverine, who normally rolls three dice, could simply add a power to add a fourth die. Now this is absolutely necessary in this particular game because the zombie heroes are not easy to take out. Here, Dark Phoenix, I feel like odds are I would probably have to roll at least six dice against her to feel comfortable about taking her out in one attack action. She's, there, there are no heart tokens in this game, so it's either all or nothing on a single attack action to take out these larger heroes. I feel like that is something 
where however it fits thematically in whatever version of zombicide undead or alive or second edition or the invaders or black plague figuring out a way that you can you know throw away a piece of equipment in black plague you have this backpack full of equipment that's usually useless throw away a piece of equipment to add a die because sometimes that really will make or break your game is just being able to take out these large hordes because we know they're coming and I feel like in this game in particular the hordes are bigger at the beginning than say Black Plague where you start with really crappy starter weapons and have to run around A open doors which is going to spawn more zombies uh, and then B spend actions to search for better equipment and it's crap shoot from there but just having a way to be able to just add dice on your turn. Now, this power is not an unlimited resource, so I have to spend time saving it up or spend actions to build it up in order to you know, get to the point where I can feel comfortable taking out the Dark Phoenix. So for the most part, yes, I'm running away from the Dark Phoenix early on, just like I would be running away from an abomination if one spawned early on in a game in Black Plague. But those are the five rules that are found again within this rule book here the marvel zombies x-men resistance that i feel like every game of zombicide moving forward should contain and with a little bit of thought you yourself can implement them in previous versions of zombicide if you're like me and still have a say black plague collection i'm going to figure out how to implement these rules into my black plague and green horde collection because i just feel like it makes the game more fun and that's what board games are supposed to do. They're supposed to be fun. That's going to do it. If you have any comments and or questions, please feel free to leave them below. And I will address them uh, to the best of my ability. And once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.